Well, imagine your car literally falling apart while driving. A car with no obvious problems can become a disaster on wheels because of what you cannot see underneath, rust. Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators is here with some real-world examples of what may be a growing problem. Yeah, absolutely. Randy Kelsey, the reality is we are driving our cars longer than ever. The average age of American vehicles is 12 years, and that's a record. And the used car market has become very, very strong. The problem we'll show you tonight is a particular issue with some cars in so-called salt belt states, like Minnesota, where rust and corrosion can seem like a simple fact of life. I was just thinking I got to get the car off the road because otherwise I'm going to get hit. Daniel Savage bought this used 2008 Subaru Forester a couple years ago as a second car for perilous Minnesota winter driving. So imagine his surprise when he was getting on Highway 610 in Brooklyn Park one day this summer. Clear skies, dry road, and suddenly, without warning, the car seemed possessed. The car just started shaking violently, lost steering, knew I had to get the car off the roads. An amateur car buff, Savage was shocked by what he found underneath his Subaru. Right here is where it snapped off. The control arm, which holds the wheels straight, had inexplicably snapped off. This part just completely rusted out from the inside out. When I hit the brake, the car dives off to the left. And his car wasn't the only one. Um, and at that split second, I realized that I, I had no steering. Um, nothing was really working at all. Same thing happened to Lydia Radcliffe this summer while driving her Forester on a county highway near Madison, Wisconsin. Next thing she knew, she found herself in a cornfield, barely missing a telephone pole and a culvert. It was horrifying. Um, I've never heard of anything happening like that before to anybody else. Um, I... I was just completely mortified. It's basically broken off from having a hole corroded through it. On Subaru message boards, you'll find drivers and owners complaining about the same problem, a catastrophic failure of the control arm from rust and corrosion. Like a Canadian family whose car crashed into a guardrail, who said they were lucky they could be in the obituaries. Savage ran his Subaru's VIN number through a database and found there was, in fact, a recall. Ten years ago, NHTSA, the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, issued this recall for the front control arm, also known as the transverse link, affecting more than 318,000 Subaru Foresters, Subaru Imprezas, and a smaller number of Saab 92Xs. The defect? A bracket holding the control arm was breaking because a drain hole would clog, causing corrosion from the inside. But the recall was for only vehicles registered in 20 so-called salt belt states, like Minnesota, where salt and corrosive chemicals are used on roads in the winter. So I went to the Subaru website, punched in the VIN, and it said, recall completed. Come to find out, the vehicle's previous owner did get this recall notice, instructing them to go to their nearest dealer for repairs. But dealerships were given a choice. Replace the control arm for $300, or if the part appeared to be in good condition, simply spraying it with an anti-rust treatment. A cheaper, quicker option to be sure, but safer? Remember, this part was rusting from the inside. Savage's Subaru got the spray, not a new part, so he filed a complaint with NHTSA, saying the company did the recall on the cheap, and NHTSA allowed it. They just basically masked the, uh, the rust problem and allowed it to continue rusting. Yeah, they told me that the anti-rust spray had been put on the vehicle. Um, Radcliffe says Subaru confirmed the Forester she bought last year got the anti-rust spray as well. She also filed a complaint with NHTSA, telling them, I don't want anyone to lose their life over this part malfunction. Yeah, I truly wish that it just, the part would have been replaced with something that was going to be functional and not have to deal with this down the road. But it's not just Subaru. GM, Mitsubishi, Honda, and Toyota have all had recent safety recalls for rust and corrosion of the chassis or frame. Altogether, nearly a million cars. NHTSA's also issued a warning for rusting pipes that carry brake fluid in 5 million older Chevrolet, Cadillac, and GMC pickups and SUVs. All the warnings and recalls 
in the salt belt states. Here's a rocker. See, there's nothing left of the rocker. But what if that used car you bought? The fender's been screwed back in. Came from outside the salt belt. We've got complete holes. If the screws don't want to come out, slow down screwing them out. Jim Schott, an auto body instructor with Hennepin Tech, says car buyers can't assume a recall has been taken care of. Vehicle, the control arm is so bad, there's solid rust. Especially if there's the risk of catastrophic failure. You could have just about anything happen, um, especially looking at this Ford over here. Um, the whole undercarriage is just about gone. Washing your car isn't just about aesthetics. It's also about safety. NHTSA recommends that car owners in salt belt states should wash the underside of their vehicle several times during the winter. It's like a cancer. You know, once it starts, there's no end to it, you know. It's also why owners should seriously consider an undercoating for their car. But be careful. You aren't trapping the rust underneath, allowing the oxidation to continue. You're guessing how much damage is underneath there. If you see a quarter size rust spot and you start working on it, it turns into a, you know, a, a, a melon size. Daniel Savage believes that's what happened with his car. The rust was already spreading out of sight, but not out of danger. And we'll kick the can down the road and maybe people will come back and, and pay us to replace them in the future. Subaru USA and NHTSA did not respond to our repeated request for comment. A lot of talk about recalls tonight, and if you're wondering if your car may be affected by any of these recalls, over at the Fox 9 app, we have links to NHTSA where you can enter your vehicle's VIN number and check. The big take-home lesson tonight, wash your car yes. and not yeah. just the shiny parts that see, people see. See, you guys see. make fun I'm of going, me for washing my car all I'm the going time. home tonight. I do have a question it. about the undercoating. Sure. Because I'm the one person in Minnesota that still does it. <laughs> and I would never get it. I, I grew up with a father <laughs> that said, don't get the undercoating, don't get, up, don't get the undercoating. Uh, good idea still. It I'm is still a good it. idea. And there are different kinds. There's silicone that we were talking about, and then there's also an oil-based one. The silicone can come off after a couple years, so some people recommend the oil ones. I, I would check with your mechanic, but yeah. there is a difference there. All right. Good on me. Good advice. Good <laughs> reminders tonight. Thank you, Tom.